The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Big news. Tonight, we're announcing the first week's winners in Parquet Margarine's $50,000 Name My Song contest. Third week's contest ends at midnight this Saturday. More than 1,300 prizes in all. Open to listeners in the United States and Canada. Full details in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, remember, the great Gildersleeve and this exciting $50,000 Name My Song contest are brought to you by the makers of Parquet Margarine. The margarine millions prefer because it tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, the great Gildersleeve has had a good day at the water department. It's with a feeling of a job well done that the great man returns to the comfort and contentment of home. Yes, yes, I'm home. You've got to do something about Leroy. I do? He's turning this house into a zoo. He drags home every animal he sees. Oh? You know what he's got now, Uncle Mort? Skunk? Grizzly bear? No, a big old tomcat. A tomcat? Look at my new stockings. He clawed me. Well, cats are playful, my dear. He probably didn't mean any harm. Well, you aren't going to let Leroy keep it. Oh, Marjorie, I hate to take Leroy's pets away from him. You know how boys are. But, Uncle Mort... Besides, the cat will probably leave anyway. You know how tomcats are, here today, gone tonight. (laughs) Well, all right, but he better keep away from my stocking. (sighs) Back to you, Mr. Gilsleeve. Yes, Bertie. Mr. Gilsleeve, you know what Leroy brought home today. I've heard all about it, Bertie. What's for dinner? That old tomcat. What? I ain't had time to think about no dinner. I ain't been thinking about nothing but getting rid of that cat. Now, Bertie... Mr. Gilsleeve, I spent all afternoon scrubbing the kitchen floor and that old tomcat comes in and tracks it all up. Well, I'm sorry, Bertie. Track, track, track all over the house. Why didn't you put him outside? I tried to, but he laid back his ears and went... Oh. I ain't taking that off of no tomcat. Hey, now, Bertie, possibly you frightened him. No, sir. I asked him outside in the nicest way. I said, kitty, 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 don't you want to go outside? And all he said was... <laughs> well, Bertie That cat's got to go Now, Bertie I said, kitty, kitty, kitty Do you want to go outside? Do you know what he said back? Yes, Bertie That's right That cat's got to go <laughs> <laughs> Life's little problems <laughs> Is that that cat? Hey, Unc Oh, oh, Leroy Do I have to get rid of Leo? Who's Leo? My cat Oh, well, from what I hear Leo seems to be getting into a little trouble you going to make me get rid of him? Well, maybe we can keep him on 30 days free trial, my boy. Marjorie and Bertie will get used to him after a while. Gosh, you're swell, huh? Yeah. Uh, where is this giant cat of yours? I'd like to see him. I don't know where he is now. Probably hiding. I don't blame him. Well, bring him around when you find him. I'll be here in my easy chair reading the paper. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah! Oh! There he is! Don't get shot on him! Leroy! That cat's got to go. <laughs> now, Leroy, eat your dinner. I'm not hungry. I'm sorry, my boy. You may as well forget it. We're not keeping that beast. Thank goodness. Gosh, Uncle. With. Other kids have dogs and cats and stuff, but I never get to have anything. Oh, my goodness. Listen, Leroy, you know that football in Hogan Brothers' window? Yeah? You'd rather have that than the old cat, wouldn't you? Gee, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, fine. You can get it the first thing tomorrow. But let's get rid of the cat tonight. Okay. I'll drop him off at the city pound before I go to the Jolly Boys meeting. A pound? Certainly. What's wrong with a pound? I'll find a home for him. What if they don't find a good one? What if they give him to somebody that's mean to him? Well... Why don't you find a good home for him, huh? Me? Now, Leroy... Okay, I don't want the football. I'll keep the cat. You will not. I'll, I'll find a home for him. There's a lot of people around who like pets. 
Uh, take Mrs. Milford. Anki, you wouldn't give him to your girlfriend's mother. Why not? Mrs. Milford is alone all day. She'd love to have a big, friendly cat around, purring beside her while she knits. A faithful companion during the lonely hours. By George, that's precisely what I'm going to do. Uh, good idea, carrying the cat in a hat box. <laughs> you look like a thoroughbred wearing that pink ribbon. Snuggle down in those Christmas wrappings. Maybe he is a thoroughbred. Who knows? Yeah, won't be long now, Leo. You'll have a new home. Yeah. And watch it when we get inside. No rough stuff. Act like a human being. No, oh, maybe you better not do that. Throckmorton. Well, Catherine. This is a surprise. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Come in. Well, I thought you'd be going to your Jolly Boys meeting tonight. Well, I'd much rather have a meeting with a jolly girl like you. <laughs> <laughs> What's in the hat box? Well, it's the little present for your mother. For mother? Well, aren't you sweet? Mother? Yes, dear. Brock Morton is here. He brought something for you. For me. Mm. Oh, how nice. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Belford. Here you are with my compliments. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. My, it's heavy. I love heavy presents. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, Mr. Gildersleeve is the most thoughtful beau you've ever had. Now, Mother. Oh, well, thank you, Mrs. Milford. <laughs> it's a lovely box. I wonder what it is. Goodness, it sounds like it's alive. Well, I wouldn't bring you a dead one. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you open it, Mother? Yeah, here, I'll hold the lid. <laughs> Why, it's a cat. A cat with a pink ribbon around its neck. Oh, it's adorable. You better put a screen over the fishbowl, Mother. Oh, no, she's a nice kitty. <laughs> its name is Leo. Leo, that's a nice name. But I've always thought if I had a cat, I'd call it Cleopatra. Well, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cats are sacred in Egypt, and Cleopatra was from Egypt. You might call him Mark Antony. Yeah, not bad. Mm -hmm. Mark Antony. <laughs> Doesn't Catherine have the most wonderful ideas, Mr. Gildersleeve? You bet. Well, Mrs. Milford, why don't you get acquainted with Kitty, and I'll get acquainted with Katie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a splendid idea. I'll warm some milk for it. Come along, Mark Antony. Ta-ta. We'll be here in the living room. I hope you can stay a while, Rock Morton. Well... I'm not one to let the cat out of the bag and run. <laughs> <laughs> what shall we do? Listen to a symphony? I'd much rather listen to you. Uh, we might try to think of a title for your song. Well, there are a lot of people working on that already. Catherine, why don't we just... What happened? What happened to the cat? Here he comes on the run. Oh, no, Mark Anthony. Oh, he jumped right out of my arms. What's wrong with him? Well, he's a little high strung. Come here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Leo, I mean Mark. <laughs> Oops. He's running up the drapes. Mark! Good climber. Brock Morton, he's tearing the drapes. Get him down. Well, I guess I'd better if I get up on this chair. Oh. Come on, Leo. Nice kitty. Oh, my lovely drapes. Yeah, don't worry, Mrs. Milford. Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Come down, kitty. Don't you at me. <laughs> you won't come down, I'll pull you down. Look out, he's going to jump. Oh. Watch the fishbowl. Leo. Oh. oh. Oh, my fishbowl. Get the fish. Get the fish. Not you, Leo. Catch him, Rock quick. I got him. Oh, ungrateful beast. I'll put him back in the box and take him someplace. Get in there, you home wrecker. Uh, it isn't that I wouldn't love to have him, Mr. Gildersleeve, but he's so active. Well, he's young, I guess. Yeah, full of life. <laughs> Leo and I better be going. What are you going to do with him? I don't know, but I'll think of something. <laughs> $50,000 in prizes, as much as $6,000 in cash to the grand prize winner. Yes, for the best names submitted for Gildersleeve's song, which you'll hear in a minute, each week for five weeks, Parquet Margarine is awarding... 
Four $1,000 cash prizes. Twenty $100 cash prizes. Fifty $20 cash prizes. Two hundred ten dollar cash prizes. And a grand prize of $5,000 extra to one of the weekly winners. You don't need to know a note of music. Just a title for Gildersleeve's song may be worth $6,000 to you in cash. So think of a title. Send it together with the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Your dealer has entry blanks containing contest rules and the complete words to Gildy's song, or use plain paper if you choose. Be sure to include your name and address and that of your dealer. Remember, send your entry together with the red end flap of a parquet package to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. This week's entries must be postmarked before midnight this Saturday, so hurry. In our next announcement, you'll get the names of the first week's winners. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Finding a home for Leroy's Tomcat is turning out to be something of a problem. But the great man doesn't give up easily. Right now, he's heading into the meeting of the Jolly Boys Club with the cat in the hat box under his arm. Yeah, I'll pawn him off on one of the Jolly Boys. Yeah. Oh, brother, they're a little off key. Those are my sentiments exactly, Kitty. Hi. Oh, hello, Hi, man. Hello, fellas. Commissioner, we didn't think you were going to make it. Yeah, well, I was a little delayed. <laughs> Where shall I put this box? I've got something quite valuable in it. Put it any place. Come on, let's sing. Well, I don't want to put this box just any place, fellas. Its contents are pretty valuable. Come on, Gildy. Peavy couldn't get here. We need you for the quartet. Say, isn't anybody curious about what I've got in this box? Is it something to eat? No. Then put it down, let's sing. <laughs> Now, look, fellas. We're going to sing your song, Gildy. My song? Well, I'll put the box in the corner then. I'll be right back, Leo. Uh, Commissioner. Uh, yes, Chief? Uh, sitting down at the jail, I've been thinking of a title for your song. That's so? What is it, Chief? Well, I, uh, haven't thought of one yet. Yes, no. <laughs> My goodness. I'll keep thinking. Yeah, you do that, Chief. Hit it, Floyd. Okay. There's an old familiar strain. A chapel on the hill, spring's first daffodils reflected in the mill pond from the shore. Judge? I recall in memory two names on a tree. Sounds just like an old ghost. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, fellas. Our first kiss in that old canoe. And, and though we drifted far apart, this song lives in my heart. Here's the melody. You know, fellas, barbershop quartets all over the country are singing my song. But they don't sing it any worse than we do. <laughs> well, let's try a second chord. Yeah. In my reverie, it seems a summer moon <laughs> Somebody off key? What was that? I said somebody off key. No, Floyd. <laughs> That's my hat box. Your hat box? What kind of a lid is it, Commit? It's no lid, Floyd. It's a very fine cat. Come on, fellas. Take a look. Well, I'll be darned. It is a cat. It certainly is. Yes, sir. Isn't he a beaut? Half Maltese, I think. I wouldn't part with this cat for all the world. Well, isn't anybody interested? Trying to get rid of him, huh, Commish? <laughs> what? If he's such a good cat, why don't you keep him? Well, it seems that everybody around our house is allergic to cats. 
Judge, how about you taking him? Thank you, Gildy, but... Uh, I'm allergic to cats also. <laughs> yes, yes. Floyd, wouldn't you like to have him? Uh-uh. Cats are sacred in Egypt, you know. Well, I ain't no Egyptian. <laughs> now, Floyd, chief. Well... No home's complete without a cat. Well, I wouldn't want him around the house, but... Well, I guess I could keep him down at the jail. Then you'll take him, chief? Well, are you sure you don't want him, Commissioner? Positive. All right, I'll take him to the jail. He, he might be good company for those poor fellows. Great. He's yours, chief. Hat box and all. Okay, that's taken care of. Now let's sing. You bet. Happy days are here again. Bed's going to feel good tonight. Ah, George, that was a great idea, taking the cat up to Jolly Boys. <laughs> Didn't seem to want to go with the chief, but you can't blame a cat for not wanting to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yes, sir, I'll get that football for Leroy in the morning, and we'll have a little peace around here. <laughs> Seems I can still hear that darn cat. <laughs> I do hear it. Oh, Fur. He's back, sitting on the fence. What kind of a jail do they run down there? Even a cat can walk out. Peavy hasn't had a chance at him yet. He could use one around the store. Meow. Wonder why people keep turning and staring at me. What's so funny about a man carrying a hat box? Oh, didn't see his tail sticking out of the air hole. <laughs> Tuck it in, kitty. it, kitty. We're going into the drugstore. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Oh, not a thing, Peavy. In fact, I came in to do something for you. You don't say. Yeah. Hmm. Peavy, guess what I have for you in this hat box. A hat? Yeah. No, Peavy. Something much more original than that. A cat. How's that? A <laughs> A cat, Peavy. That's what I thought you said. Mm. Yeah, look at him. Isn't he a fine specimen? Mm -hmm. He's quite a feline, all right. Where did you get him, Mr. Gildersleeve? It's not important where I got him. It's where I leave him. I mean, uh... <laughs> How'd you like to have him, Peavy? Well, all right. Wait till I take him out of the box so you can really see him. There. Head up, kitty. Yeah. See how well bred he looks when I hold his tail straight out? Just like a show cat. Mr. Gildersleeve, it's not customary to show cats on the soda fountain. Well, I'll put him down on the floor then. But look at him, Peavy. Look how he holds his nose up in the air. Mm, he smells my bologna sandwiches. I'll bet he smells a mouse, Peavy. I don't allow mice up here in the front end, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh? Well, I bet you've got mice back in your storeroom. Well, there may be a transient now and then, but... I knew it. You know what you need to catch those mice? Mm-hmm. Mouse trap. Oh. <laughs> Peavy, give the cat a chance. Nobody's ever made a better mouse trap. Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, Peavy, I'm just trying to do you a favor. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, why don't you take him over to the Rexall pharmacy and do them a favor? <laughs> I may just do that, and I'll take my business over there, too. I was going to buy a box of cigars and have a few prescriptions filled, and I'm taking candy regularly to Miss Milford, but... Mr. Gildersleeve, I... What? Uh, maybe I do need a cat. <laughs> Jump out, Leo, and make yourself at home. <laughs> mm, ah, well, I guess I'll be off to bed, Bertie. Yes, sir. <laughs> that old Tom Cat ain't come back this time. No, uh, he'll stay at the drugstore. If 
Probably catnip in some of those bottles. <laughs> Before you go upstairs, Miss Gillsleeve, would you help me carry the basket of clothes? Sure, Bertie. Where is it? Out here on the back porch. Oh? Here it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bertie, do you ever wash black clothes and white clothes together? No, sir. Well, there's a black stocking sticking out from under this tablecloth. Where's that? Right there. Look. Oh, it's a tail. Ow! Leo, back again. And sleeping in my clothes. Get out of there. Get, get out. How'd he do it, Mr. Gillsleeve? How'd he find his way back? Probably read the street signs, Bertie. <laughs> Why, George, tomorrow morning I'm going to take him clear out of town. He won't be able to find his way back with radar. <laughs> Sit down, Kitty. Don't try to watch where we're going. <laughs> Pretty smart cat. Maybe if I put my hand out left and make a right turn. <laughs> nah, he'd never fall for that. <laughs> Pretty bumpy road. Relax, Kitty. <laughs> Don't know where you are, do you, Kitty? <laughs> Cats hate water. If I take this side road for about a mile, I can drive through the creek. Then I'll go over those hills through the woods. Hope I can find my own way back. Yeah, this ought to be far enough. Lonesome out here. Well, come on, Leo. Out you go. Yeah. See that big red barn over there? Should be a lot of fat mice in there. And nice warm straw to sleep in. I'll put you down, and you run right over there. No, no, Kitty. Stop rubbing against my leg. Now, Kitty. Don't try any of that now. You run along. No, not over there. Head for the barn. The barn city cat. Maybe it's never seen a barn. Oh, well. I've done the best I can. Anyway, he's over 21. rest tonight. We'll have that cat yowling on the back fence wanting to come in. Wonder why I can't get to sleep. Wind seems to be getting stronger out there. But it's cold outside. That'll be nice and warm in that barn. If he found the barn. Hmm. Now it's starting to rain. Better get up and put the window down. Brr. Good night out for man or beast. Beast. I'm not going to worry about Leo, though. Cats can take care of themselves. After all, they have nine lives. Oh, brother, on a night like this, a cat could use them up pretty fast. <laughs> Might just tiptoe downstairs and open the back door, just in case. Of course, I don't know why he'd want to come home. He should know by now we don't want him around here. I'll open the door about six inches. Zeke, raining pitchforks. Wonder if Leo's getting wet. Look at that lightning. Cats are full of electricity, but I doubt if Leo could handle that bolt. <laughs> well, better get back to bed. Might leave a little milk by the door, though, just in case. Hi, Uncle. Oop, Leroy, you frightened me. What are you doing up? Gosh, I couldn't sleep, and I heard you come downstairs. Well, I couldn't sleep either. You worried about the cat, Unc? Me worried about the cat? Of course not. What's there to worry about? Just came downstairs to have some milk. Yeah? When did you start drinking out of a saucer? <laughs> Yes, I'm a little late for breakfast. It must 
the cat kept the cat locked up last night, Unc. Who? Where you took him yesterday. Uh, oh, yeah. Bertie's been mopping the kitchen floor. Yeah, the storm blew the back door open last night, Unc. Ah. Uh? <laughs> Howdy, Miss Gilsey. Yeah, good morning, Bertie. Breakfast is going to be a little late. I know that. Any sign of the cat this morning, Bertie? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. You must have found him a good home this time, Miss Gilsey. Uh, yeah. I certainly didn't like that old cat. But it was kind of you, Unky, making sure he was taken care of. Yeah. It's a good thing you had a home last night. That was the worst storm we ever had. Wind, rain, thunder, lightning. Oh, please, Bertie. You're a very kind man, Miss Gilsey. Hmm. You think I'll go read the paper? <laughs> What's the matter, Unky? Nothing. Call me when breakfast is ready. Uh, uh, even the headlines are all about the storm. That poor little dumb animal. So trusting. I'll never forget the way he brushed against my leg and purred when I dumped him. <laughs> well, if he's gone, he's gone. Might as well sit down and read the paper. <laughs> oh, you're back! Leroy, he made it! Welcome home, old man. <laughs> And now, the first week's winners in Parquet Margarine's five-week $50,000 Name My Song contest. $1,000 in cash to Mrs. Sue Sanders, Route 1, Box 652, Bessemer, Alabama. Alabama, huh? Mrs. Ressa M. Bader, 362 South 12th Street, Apartment 2F, Richmond, California. Richmond. Mrs. Anita Whitterell, 18 Ward Avenue, Millbury, Massachusetts. Uh. Eldred C. Newman, 1520 Penn Avenue, Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Good. And 270 other winners to be notified by mail. Still time to get in on this week's contest, but hurry. Send your name for Gildersleeve's song, together with the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine, before Saturday midnight to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. You may have a title in your head that's worth $6,000 in cash. Remember, folks, you can get a six-inch plastic recording of my song for only 25 cents and the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine. Send the money and the flap to Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. Same address as the contest. This is not a part of the contest, but having the record may inspire a prize-winning idea. Remember, Parquet Margarine, Box 5167, Chicago 77, Illinois. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Which suits your taste? Mustard that's mild, delicately spiced, or sharp, snappy mustard with zing in every bite? Either way, you like craft prepared mustard, for there are two kinds. Salad mustard, tangy but gentle, and craft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Either works magic in bringing out hidden flavor, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft Prepared Mustard. You are tuned for the stars.